Welcome to a new year and a new Metro Focus. We've got some big plans for 2017 that'll make your ride a little smoother. We'll tell you more about that in a minute, but first, we're exploring some exciting attractions in Maryland today. We'll jump in the ring at a boxing gym where you can knock out your New Year's resolution to get fit. The new MGM Casino at National Harbor is now open. We'll show you how to get there without having to worry about parking. Metro is working to get back to good. We'll tell you what that means for you and what we're doing right now to improve your commute. Plus, a look at how Metro is preparing for the presidential inauguration. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. This is Metro Focus. We're in Rockville today at Champion Boxing and Fitness. It's the new year, a lot of people with a New Year's resolution to get fit. This is one good option for you. We're here with the owner, Doug Kelly. Hey, Doug, how long have you guys been here? We've been here over five years now. Tell us, this is a great spot. You're right on Rockville Pike, so pretty convenient for everyone. Oh, it's real convenient. We're right across from the White Flint Metro Station, which was one of the reasons we selected this location. One of the great advantages of our location, frankly, is that we're about 150 feet away from the White Flint Metro which makes it really accessible for people up county and from people down county. We have members that come all the way from D.C. because it's either on their way to or from work. So tell us a little bit about what you guys have planned for 2017. A new year, this is a, gr a great facility. What do you guys have going on? We are just doing what we do best, and that is boxing fitness training. Uh, we have fitness classes. Uh, half our membership are, are women. We also have youth boxing. The boxers are in as good a condition as any athletes out there. And besides boxing, we also have the jiu-jitsu, kickboxing. Uh, we do have some Krav Maga also, and we run boot camps. And we also have an amateur boxing team. And we do have some professional boxers that train here also. They'll come in from Pittsburgh, the Carolinas to spar. Uh, we also have amateur boxing events here as part of USA Boxing, which is the amateur organization for boxing in the U.S. Everybody's heard of the Golden Gloves. Mm -hmm. USA Boxing is part of that. And I know you have uh, some pretty impressive trainers who are professional boxers. Tell me a little bit about them. Well, the big name is William Joppy. And William was a three-time middleweight champion back in the 90s. And he's a terrific guy. He also spends a lot of his time now speaking to youth groups about individual responsibility and doing the right thing. So going back to a little bit about the fitness aspect behind boxing, you know, there's a lot of movement. There's a, there's a lot going on. What are, what are the benefits? It seems like you get the cardio from it, right? Well, you're learning a skill, you get cardio, you get a lot of course training also, strengthening, upper body, ab work, it's leg work, just because it's boxing doesn't mean you're not getting a lower body workout too, and you can burn, you're can you burning calories. We had a, a one gentleman who burnt 1,500 calories just a couple weeks ago in one class. Wow. Because we have also monitors for you to wear, it's part of my zone. We have a, a monitor you strap onto your chest. We, we, we sell them to all the members. And the, and the members then can monitor their workouts as they're doing them in real time. And they can compare themselves to other members. It's a wonderful way not just to only participate, but the way to gauge your workout and your own progress. You can store up to 16 hours of your fitness data on these monitors so you can compare yourself over time. But it's also a way to be competitive because some people come in and you, can, you want to compete. That kind of drives you forward so you can use the monitor to compete with other people and basically make your workout as efficient as possible. I see also you guys have a boxing ring set up, you guys have spotlights. This looks like the real thing. People can get in there and actually box against each other, right? Yes, you can once the coach says you're ready for the sparring. And then what he does, he'll match you up with somebody who's about your level or somebody who's a good bit better than you and they'll pull their punches because no, we don't want anybody getting hurt. Right. We also have a program that's specially designed for Parkinson's patients. It's called Rocksteady Boxing. But what it does is it helps stop or turn back the ravages of Parkinson's on patients. Good morning. My name is Alan Lowe. I'm, I'll be 83 in February. I come because my doctor recommended participating in a Boxing for Parkinson's Disease group. I was diagnosed with Parkinson's in the spring of 2011. I started on June 2nd, 2016, and that, that was the day, that was the opening day for the program. Uh, the warm-up period is about 10 minutes. Then we do various exercises uh, on the bags usually. Uh, we do strengthening exercises and aerobic type exercises, and, and we do balancing exercises. 
My walking is better than it used to be, and I pass a lot of people who walk faster than they do. And my posture, I think, is a lot better also. Well, we have a, a whole host of uh, programs here. We have adult programs that really say for the general fitness population, but then we have more specific programs that uh, are geared more towards the kids, and those are some that we're the most proud of. The programs really are designed to teach virtue. They're designed much like the martial arts system where we have a very structured program that will give kids a chance to be active, a chance to be in a structured environment, a chance to be physically active and learn about exercise and nutrition, but also a chance for them to develop certain skills and athleticism and to be part of something bigger than themselves. But we're not putting kids in the ring to spar full contact. It has nothing to do with that. We provide them with a chance to make friends, a chance to develop their, their own character, a chance to become more athletic and learn competitiveness all in a place that's really caring and, and loving and, and really structured for them. We also have a lot of young athletes who play other sports who've been recommended to come here because their coaches want to teach them mental toughness or the type of physical fitness, the hand-eye coordination, the reaction time, the critical decision making, things that boxing can teach along with the virtues and, and truly the chance to be brave and to challenge themselves but in a very loving, caring environment. The experience here at our gym is different than, let's say, some of the other gyms who have great, great things to offer. We just offer something different. First of all, it's been proven that the caloric burn in boxing workouts up to a thousand calories an hour, which is really high and intense workouts. Secondly, is that uh, while you're doing this, you're always mentally engaged. It's not something you don't drone on on a treadmill or, or a stationary bike. You come here and you're mentally engaged the entire time. So for the entire hour that you're here working out, you're engaged in the workout. You're constantly moving from exercise to exercise. You're constantly engaged in developing your own skill. You are developing capabilities that you previously didn't have. All that wrapped in a really fun, intense physical workout. So it really becomes something that people look forward to as opposed to something that people dread. It's definitely the newest and one of the largest casinos in the area. The MGM National Harbor is now open and Metro offers a convenient way to get you there. The NH2 Metro bus connects Old Town Alexandria to National Harbor. You can catch the NH2 at the Huntington or King Street Old Town Metro stations and ride across the river. The route is the first in 13 years to cross the reconstructed Woodrow Wilson Bridge now that the areas on both sides of the Potomac are seeing a boom in economic development. So not only can you get to the casino, but you can also visit the shops, restaurants, and all the attractions National Harbor has to offer. With Metro Bus, you won't have to worry about finding parking or the stress of being behind the wheel while sitting in traffic. The NH2 runs every 30 minutes, that is seven days a week from 5 a.m. until 1 a.m. For more information and to view the bus timetable, just go to WMATA.com and search NH2. The Highwood Theater moved to this location in downtown Silver Spring in the fall of 2013. We started out with just one small suite and now we have four. We are just now opening our brand new theater that's going to be seating twice as many people as before. And we are very excited to be growing as the community grows and we reach people all over the Silver Spring area, Montgomery County, into DC, Northern Virginia, Prince George's County. It's been really exciting to see us grow. We're very excited to open up this new space and reach more people. Reiterating what Sarah said, um, so yeah, Highwood has been in this location for about three years now, a little over three years. Before that, we were at a private school in Rockville. So this is our 14th season. Uh, what a way to kick off our first Big student show of the season, um, Thoroughly Modern Millie, with the opening of our brand new theater upstairs. So it's been a really exciting and wild ride, and we can't wait to increase our programming and really um, continue to build relationships with people in the community. Being near the Metro has been extremely beneficial for us. We have um, professional actors who will come from the DC and Northern Virginia areas who 
don't want to drive here on 495 during rush hour traffic um, because we do some professional productions as well as improv comedy nights and so it's a great gateway for those other communities to get to come up to Silver Spring and walk just a few minutes to our space. Um, but the Metro, my experience has been really great with it and I manage all the improv comedy nights at Highwood um, and a lot of the times we do get a lot of people from coming from the DC area and also Virginia uh, it's only a 10 minute walk so it's really convenient for them and it, it, it helps them get around a little easier and not have to rely on Uber or other methods of transportation. So yeah, Highwood has a year-long series of improv comedy nights. Um, so DC's uh, indie improv scene is actually really thriving right now. We're really lucky to have uh, an area that really is welcoming and embracing to the improv community. Um, so a lot of shows are popping up and Highwood has been doing improv shows for uh, a little over two years now. Um, and it's really grown. We welcome over 60 to 70 troops a season. Um, and uh, we basically just get in contact with the troops. Um, they come on out here, bring their friends, family, spread the word around us. So it really is a true community event. And it's a really nice way to get people in the same space and just forget about the troubles in the lives for an hour or two. We were actually named one of the top DC improv comedy venues last year, which is pretty cool. So actually, a lot of the improv troops do post videos after their shows. So if you just search up High with Theater Improv, you'll probably find a few. There's definitely more nightlife going on. There's so many restaurants and bars and places opening that people are wa walking around looking to see what else Silver Spring has to offer. And we've had lots of people just kind of come up to us and be like, hey, I saw the posters in your windows. You have a show. Can we get tickets? And they're just looking for more interesting things to do than just going out having a drink. This is a great addition to that. Come see a show, come uh, watch some improv, things like that. It's a, it's a great addition to a fun night out. And also in terms of volunteers, we get a lot of people who walk by and email us the day after saying, hey, I just discovered your theater. I'm really interested in helping out really any way I can. So it's a really great community to have because a lot of people are just willing to go the extra mile and, and, and participate even if it isn't necessarily just to watch a show. They want to help out behind the scenes as well. We are opening our largest student musical in the history of Highwood. It is Thoroughly Modern Millie, which is a really fun, jazzy musical about um, the Roaring Twenties. It was actually on Broadway with Sutton Foster, so it's a fantastic musical, and our students are doing a phenomenal job. We have lots of programs for students, um, like this show. They can come in and rehearse and perform a play, full-blown production like this. There's also class opportunities where they can learn dance, improv, stage combat. We have summer camp, so there's a lot of really great arts education. Um, technical theater where they program the lights, build the sets. A lot of the stuff that you see in here was done by our students, so we have a really talented, great bunch of kids. Um, we're always trying to be accepting, no matter what their skill level is, we welcome them to come participate. So we have our Creating Our Future campaign, which is a Highwood's first major capital campaign. Um, so that is to really cover the cost of getting this new space. So basically it involves getting this much larger theater that can seat 70 people as opposed to just 35. We also have a new workshop, we have a new rehearsal room, and um, also the next few phases of our project involve modifying our current spaces um, because a lot of those are just too small and cramped to allow for the expanded programming we're going to be having because of this. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a great cause, obviously, and it really um, is benefiting more than just the kids, it's benefiting the community as a whole. We do serve a lot of underprivileged areas. We have financial aid available for students who would like to participate in our classes but don't necessarily have the means in their budget. Um, we also go out into schools and provide a lot of arts education supplements for teachers who would like to expand their fine arts programs but don't always have the ability. And so we are a nonprofit and we do love to go out and do those things. So having this campaign to raise $150,000 by the end of our season will not only benefit our in-house programs but also the students we reach out to throughout the year. And one exciting phase of the project is actually turning our current downstairs black box into an open source studio. A lot of times we get inquiries from local theater companies who want affordable theater space, which is very hard to come by in the D.C. area sometimes. Um, so we're turning that into a black box that can be rented out to any group, performing group or rehearsal group um, at an affordable price, um, which is something we're really excited about. Um, and it's really something that we've wanted to do for a long time. And it's very fantastic that it's actually happening. <laughs> at Highwood, there's so many ways to get involved. Um, if you're a student or adult just looking to try theater for the first time, we have private lessons. 
Um, if you're a student, we have uh, we have classes, we have productions, we have our student tech group. Um, there are so many opportunities to get involved and don't be afraid to take risks. So this is the perfect place to experiment and try something new. So come on out, see a show, volunteer. Um, we'd take love to have class. you. Yes. To learn more about our programs and shows, you can go to www.thehighwoodtheater.org. You can see everything that we offer there and how to contact us. Come see a show. Hello, I am Fadel Yassin and welcome to Apollo Restaurant in Rockville at 12 North Washington Street. Apollo Restaurant uh, is a family-owned restaurant that has been in the community for more than 30 years. We serve Mediterranean food and American food from Greek, Lebanon and uh, the authentic American as well. We took over one year ago, exactly December last year we took over and uh, we are from Lebanon and uh, we introduced a lot of new items on the menu, Lebanese items as well. Apollo Restaurant uh, is located in Rockville Town Center, uh, as if like in the old part of the city. It's just close to the courthouse center. So there is a lot of businesses in the area, there is a big potential, and that's why we have chosen this location. We have people that have been coming here for the last 20 years who live in Rockville and we have people who saw us on Facebook and on the social media who comes from DC and from Virginia. We serve, uh, as we said, uh, Greek and Lebanese, so people would like to try this new, new items as well. As you know, small businesses like us, family-owned restaurants, need anything, any positive point to help grow the business and Metro help us in that point. We are a walking distance away from Rockville Metro Station. Uh, our customers use the metros to come to us, to walk to us. Also employees use the metro to come to work. We have chosen Rockville because like we think there is a big potential in the area. There is not as many as of Mediterranean places. So we wanted to grow that, uh, that business in, in a place where we can be competitive and we can do good business. We, we are a presence on all uh, social media, on, uh, on Groupon, on Grabhub. You can find us on Facebook and like us please, and on Instagram as well. We can do online orderings. Uh, our website is apollorestaurant.us. Our working hours on weekdays are from 9 in the morning until 8 in the evening. We serve breakfast, lunch and dinner and on weekends, on Saturday we do 8 in the morning until 8 in the evening and on Sunday we open 8 to 2. We cook our food with love, with our heart. Uh, it's like a family restaurant as I said. So we make sure that we have our grandma's recipes all the time. So that's why we are different from other restaurants. At Apollo, we make sure that our customers are happy because they are our assets. Uh, we provide them with good food and good service all the time. Thank you so much for watching us and I would love to invite you to come and enjoy our delicious food. With Inauguration Day quickly approaching, Metro would like to share some helpful travel and safety information. Metro anticipates high ridership on Inauguration Day and the days leading up to the inaugural events. Be prepared for long lines, crowded trains and buses, and possible delays. On Friday, January 20th, Inauguration Day, Metro Rail will open at 4 a.m. and close at midnight. Train service will operate at near rush hour levels with peak fares from opening until 9 p.m. Rush Plus service will be in effect from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Metro Bus will operate on a Saturday schedule with additional trips on selected routes. 
The weekend following the inauguration, Metro Rail will open at 7 a.m. and close at midnight with trains running on a regular weekend schedule. Metro Bus will also operate on a regular weekend schedule. If you plan on taking Metro, the best way to pay for your trip is using a Smart Trip card. Metro's limited edition commemorative Smart Trip card is available in advance for the special price of $10. You can purchase one or more online at wamada.com slash inauguration. The card comes preloaded with a one-day pass good for unlimited rides on Metro Rail and Metro Bus on Inauguration Day. You can use it anytime after that by adding value to the card either online or at any Metro Rail station. You can also purchase a Smart Trip card using the fare vending machines at any Metro Rail station. But keep in mind, you could encounter long lines if you wait until the last minute to purchase your card. Once you have a Smart Trip card, you are ready to ride. For Metro Rail, tap in at a fare gate to enter the system. You'll need to tap out at the fare gates to exit once you arrive at your destination. On Metro Bus, tap your card at the fare box once you board. You won't need to tap out to exit. If you are taking Metro Rail, plan your trip so that you don't have to transfer between rail lines. There is a station near the National Mall on each of Metro's six rail lines. Consider avoiding crowded stations and trains by walking a few blocks to reach your destination. Again, we strongly recommend purchasing your Smart Trip card in advance to avoid long lines on Inauguration Day. If you're taking Metro Bus, there could be detours to your route due to inaugural events. However, Metro Bus will still get you close to the National Mall. Look for the red, white, and blue Metro Bus stop signs along major roadways. The signs indicate which Metro Bus routes serve that stop. To check bus arrival times and get more information, use the bus ETA system at WMATA.com or call 202-637-7000. More than 30 bus routes will experience service changes due to road closures. Many routes that normally cross the National Mall will be forced to turn around. That means you may not be able to use buses to travel to destinations on the other side of the mall, but you can use them to get to the inauguration. Bus routes that are cut short by road closures at the National Mall will pick up on the opposite side. Bus operators will have a special event transfer pass so that you can complete your trip. Parking facilities at Metro fill up very quickly. Have a backup plan if the parking facility you've chosen is full. Consider connecting bus service, carpools, taxi, biking, or even walking if possible. You will pay regular parking rates at Metro operated parking facilities. Parking is free on the weekend. You cannot use a one-day pass to pay for parking unless you add value to your card. The inauguration takes place during the coldest time of the year. Be prepared to walk and stand in cold temperatures for an extended period of time. Be sure to dress warmly. Remember, smoking, eating, and drinking are prohibited within the metro system, including on trains, buses, and at stations. Bicycles, large coolers, or containers will not be permitted aboard metro trains on Inauguration Day. If you see anything suspicious like an unattended package, alert a metro employee or call Transit Police at 202-962-2121 or dial 911. Make sure you stay connected. Text POTUS to 90360 to receive Metro Inauguration Day service info and alerts. We will also be providing updates on Twitter. For train information, follow at Metro Rail Info. For bus information, follow at Metro Bus Info. And for everything you need to know about Metro's Inauguration Day plans, visit wmata.com slash inauguration. safety of the system is a given you know the customers don't you know that's not something they want to focus on that should just be a basic given and we know that what they want is they want the trains to run on time and they want the buses to run on time that's what they want and that's what we're going to focus on on 17 we're going to put a much greater emphasis on customer experience particularly with regards to reducing the number of delays due to track issues the delays due to car issues, and then we're going to improve their environment, particularly in the stations. Uh, bus, we're also doing things like that, but what we're hearing from the public is particularly focused on the rail. I see you. Okay. I see you. I see you. What they say to me is that just get it back to good first, and then we'll, we'll go to the next level. We anticipate cutting the number of unplanned customer delays due to track issues alone by 50%. So let me just repeat, we'll, we'll reduce the number of track delays unplanned track delays in our customers by 50%.
Uh, cars is a whole nother issue. Um, and uh, the, the issue is either we don't dispatch the cars or the, one, the ones we dispatch break down, which is even worse for our, for our customers. In a given month, there are 45 million opportunities for doors to go bad because we operate that many times. Anytime door does not open or close or lock successfully, it can prevent the train from taking power and the train gets stuck there. Now, that's why I want to show you that this is the one of the things of the rollers. As you can see that one of the roller is, is broken. So what we are doing that we are changing all the rollers. These are the new rollers. And these rollers are not easy to access and not easy to see. Air leaks may be anywhere from the air horn to all the little fittings we have, but it's hard to detect that. And there's also blind spots you can't see or get your hands around. So what we have is a device that the ultrasonic uh, sensor that allows you to pick up uh, air leaks that are typically above the sound of what a air, human air could hear. It's starting to register a, a reading. And I can tell right in this area there's an air leak, but I can't hear that, and I can't even, I can't feel it. The compressor on that rail car is continuously working, trying to keep that pressure up to a, where it's supposed to be 130 psi, and anything below that, it just starts working the compressor. So it's wear and tear on your compressor parts, uh, the reliability of the car, the reliability of the compressor. All those things are improved when you can reduce the. the uh, and if you have a big enough leak, it drops the pressure down. That basically the, the system is designed, the car is designed to stop the car. We're going to take what it's porous, but you can pour water over it. So what we're trying to show that the size of the filter is such that the water cannot go through this one. All right? Okay. Once we are done with this thing, now we want to show you that the only air can go through this one. So the only air can go through this one, but not the water. So the size of the filter is such that the air molecule will go through anything bigger than that, it will block it. So any dirt or dust is there is going to block this one, so preventing the coils from getting dirty again. It's very difficult to uh, get up here and clean the coils as they were. So we uh, developed the wand that has pinholes along the whole wand so you can get up there and clean the entire uh, coils and cover the entire coil and get the coils clean. This impacts the uh, ability for the high back to work by getting the We just got to make sure that we're providing the best product we can. We're constantly thinking through things. We're trying new things as you've seen here. Uh, but that's our problem. It's, it's, it's not. I mean, the passengers deserve everything we can do for them. That's our job. We will be eliminating both the 1000 and the 4000 series out of the, out of the fleet by the end of 17. Uh, those are our, 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 the most difficult ones to keep uh, maintained and to keep running. We will be doubling the, the amount of 7,000 uh, series cars that we have today into the system. That will re basically represent about a third of our fleet during the peak periods. Um, and that is a much better product. You've already seen some of that. You've, you, most of you probably experienced those as they've come online. Very important for, for our customers is they want more telephone access in the system, cell phone access. Uh, we all now are linked to these things. And the minute that something you don't feel comfortable, you, you turn to it. And unfortunately, you can't do that if you're in between some of our stations. So by the end of the year, we will have the, the red line, um, the east side of the red line totally done so that you can do that, and the east side of the blue line and silver line from basically Metro Center uh, East, that you'll do that, and we'll continue to chip away at that issue for our customers. I am confident over the next year that we will improve the experience for our customers, and we're going to know it because they're going to tell us what their experience is. It's not going to be us telling them. Literally, we're going to have data that shows that, and we're going to hold our people accountable for moving those numbers. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Metro Focus. If you want more information on any of the Metro initiatives you've seen today, just log on to our new website. It's wamata.com. We'll see you next time.